hello and welcome to the lecture so let's continue with the apex javascript apis and now we are in the apex.util which is one more popular apis for the javascript where we can make use of the utility functions for our apex development in the javascript side so these are very common functions that we can use it for the development and all these are possible to achieve in javascript as well but these are simplified for the apex framework and you can make use of that and i do recommend to go through every function and we are just covering few that will be useful for now and mostly on the array side where we'll be equating the array as well so basically we just use this array equal and even debounce when you are searching for something and want to populate it you know the debouncing concept and the throttling that we'll be using and even the escape html that will be for the you know avoiding the cross-site scripting and the get date from iso that will also be used and we'll see this more on here and so starting from this function which is on the util side is the array equal i will just go through this so this is a array equal side so basically we have two arrays as the parameter that will have a written value as the true or false like a boolean so just compares two arrays whether it's equal or not even the data types so this has an example here you can understand this returns true because it's it's the same and this is also the same but it has a different data type because one here and this three right yeah so this three is a string here so it's not equal so that's why it returns false it's more about type comparison as well this will be useful because in the case where we'll have this uh, page right so in the console if i just type this so let me just uh, give a live demo on this so this will give me true right so if i just change that to three so this will be giving me false because the same example which we saw so this will be useful in the case where we have the select list uh, like a multiple selection or a shuttle or a list manager where it will return me as a array of you know values were based on the user selection so let us make this as multiple selection for now so here is the select list right so i'll just make this as multiple selection so that will you get the value in the form of array i'm just making this and refreshing so using the control key we can now select multiple and let me clear this and this is having the value you know as uh, this one so what is the id here is this p2 store id so we'll use this to get the value using the apex dot item so i'm just uh, using here dot get value so this returns me as an array of values right so these are string specific and it's not a number so this kind of user selection when user wants to compare you can make use of this apex.util.array equal so for some comparison if there is a changes in the selection or not or something so or in the order it it is about more specific logic to that so i'm not showing any example now this is more about the practical way to understand so this about the multiple selection where it becomes equal and then only proceed for something that that's the business logic i'm telling so this is about the array equal and we do have the other things like two array with respect to uh if we want to convert that to an array so that will also be useful basically if you have some pure sql that will written like uh, you know this kind of a thing so for an example and you want to convert that to an array so here we have this example right so let me copy this and going here so if you want to convert this uh, thing which is coming from pure sql for an example and you want to make this as an array you can do that this two array so it just converts this colon separation to this way and there is also another possibility you can 
add so if the instead of colon it is coming as you know comma separated value you can add the second parameter to mention what is the separator so basically it's like uh, more about the split and join uh, it's more about split i can tell where we have in the javascript but this is more about the apex side we can make use of that so it's about that specific right and yeah so this is about the apex util.2 array this is more of the utilities for the array side and going to the next one we have the escape html so here we have this escape html basically for the cross-site scripting attacks we do have to you know pass that uh, characters html characters cross-site scripting is more about injecting the scripts to this using on the browser it can be coming from your database also and it basically injects and do something in your application so you just have to use the escape html so here we have an example like you know we can use the apex uh, e .util to escape html so if it has some characters like the script a lot of tags we'll have right so for an example if we just type it a uh, html thing so like script so it will just escape it so that for a safety side it will just return like Amberson LT that is less than and then Amberson GT colon, semicolon that is greater than so this will be on a safer side so that it won't be recognized and in the bra HTML element well so even we have that case uh, cross-site attacks in our Apex but basically you have to make use of this function and for psql side we do have a reference we can see that sys.htf so even we have the apex for dot escape html in the psql right so that also you can make use of that so this is more about the javascript so this is more friendly for you to use it and now we have the get scroll bar size so this is more about for the uh, you know for the browser environment why because the scroll bar size is important when you just want to fix a width for the you know for your uh, for the text area or somewhere you just want to fix your width or you just want to fix a region height or width you just have to specify in in some way how the scroll bar length is so basically if you do have a height more than the particular div this is more about user designing concept so for that the scroll bar width plays a major role here so this is a scroll bar width so if you just copy this the scroll bar size so we will be getting the scroll bar size here that is 17 pixels so this is width scroll bar height is not shown here because this is more about in the uh, y-axis side so this is plays a major role basically if you load the same application in some other browser the browser scroll bar will be varying because that's a browser configuration how it is designed at the setup side so that's about browsers thing right so basically getting the scroll bar size from the browser is is it's a bit you know you can't be predicting right so you just have to use the browser size and just uh, set up the width and height for any region that you want so this is more about the html css side but this will be very useful to get the scroll bar size for the development that's about that and then we have the you know about the spinner so that's also very useful and it do was very useful uh, for a uh, you know earlier versions of oracle apex that shows spinner so this basically shows a spinner whether we can have to show some indicator like a better user experience right so that is about here so let me copy this and i will just you have to assign it to a variable that is the recommended way so i'm just putting where spinner recon to this one apex you not show spinner so by default the show spinner is about having the you know the dom element as in the center of the page 
you can specify which element it has to be in the center basically if you want this region the spinner has to be in the center you can specify that is about that so let me show you the default one so it's showing me the spinner right now so this is very default it's in the center of the page that is the body element so it takes that body element from the html and it just centers that that's about here so if you want to show some way that it has to be in the second side so first before that we will just remove the spinner so to remove that spinner first we will see what is in the spinner variable so it's the object that returns me like a jquery object right so in jquery object we have a remove keyword so spinner dot remove will just remove the dom from the dom so if i put spinner dot remove it will remove me from the dom so that's about here so this is about removing that's why i tell you to assign it to a variable so that we can later remove it so if you want to uh, add the spinner to a particular uh, element i mean for the center of this region maybe so this region has the id s underscore stores that's the id right so if you put hash s underscore stores here i missed yes yeah so now you can see it is more about in the center of the region i mean the how how from this view it is taken from here to here so this is in the center of this interactive grid and it's coming here right so that's about that it's not in the center of the page i would say so it's more on the center of the interactive grid because that's the region id for this so even you can make it center of some other region you want in this dialog or somewhere you can make it and then same way you should remove it so this application comes into way in the apex.server.process earlier but we do have some better optimizations here and better functionality added in the new versions of oracle apex so basically if you just uh, want to confirm like you know so i'm just copying this var spinner and i will just add it over here so this is on the edit button which we have implemented for the interactive grid so before calling the process we have to declare it and then once the page is loaded we can add it so it's like a delay because we do have a delay so this is calling a psc call function from the ajax and we need to add some indicator so basically i can show you here so if i open this edit in form this opens a model dialog i i know this is very it's taking some around one to two seconds time the meanwhile so if it's taking more time it's like uh, very much confusion to the user right so this comes into play the spinner one for the better user experience so that's about here that's that's the thing i was want to tell so we have to add some spinner so that it will add and once the process is success or it fails also we should uh, remove the spinner so we can add that spinner here dot remove so this is more about that one what we want a spinner so let me save it so you remember there's no spinner earlier so we added now using this util and if we now click on the edit form you can see a spinner here now on the center of the interactive grid so that's about that so if you just click again your spinner is loaded and once the process success it's more about using the remove now so for this uh, apex.util now we can understand here and now coming back to the friendly way which i said so let's clear this and if we can see that we will remove this as well so for this apex dot util dot spinner so they have made it a better way like a loading indicator where we have to pass the you know dollar of that stores where we want to show the spinner and also one more parameter where we want to add the position by default it will be in the you know top left corner of the region so we have to add a position here like centered so basically you can refer in the apex.server.process dot dot documentation it is mentioned 
and it also has a function acceptance over here but a jquery object would be a better way for me and now if you see it is the same way in this apex.util.show spinner and now if i open this edit in form okay there's some mistake here maybe i just missed it so i have to use the dollar of ash because that's the jquery selector right and now if i see again and if i click edit in form now it's coming the spinner is in the same way what we have implemented but this apex dot dot process uh sorry server dot process now it is very more customized and we can add this uh, key with the uh, here and in the position so basically it's about that and we do have other properties also here in the spinner and even you can mention jquery object and other things what are the spinner class you can customize your own instead of this uh, that one which we saw because this has a, a thing right so the spinner is having a class called u processing so this is the one that is using this animation so you can add your own class as well uh, depending on the cases of your design so this is about the show spinner i know this is not used much uh, if uh, the for the apex server process uh, new versions but you can use it for other cases in the javascript where you are having the set timeout so in case you want to ha have a function in the delay that needs to be called after some time you can add the show spinner and make the user to wait for some time like a friendly manner and inside the set timeout you can remove it once the execution is done so in that case it would be useful that's the thing and now going about the next things right the necessities here even the debouncing is very useful that's about calling a function after a certain time with a delay and you have the example here as well so even this will be useful but we don't have any search functionality here on our own so that's that's about that it's it's just a mention that you have a great documentation to refer here for the util and and that's about that so this is about the apex so javascript apis we do have a lot of things that are very much you know explained to the user well and just make use of those everything and explore a lot to add more customizations in your application using javascript apis the more to that using the apex one the more optimized way you can get it